on behalf of the Cape Girardeau Fire Department, we really appreciate everybody coming out today. Um, we think we have a very unique opportunity here today to test and demonstrate residential fire sprinklers. Um, I've been at this for about 28 years. Two things that I'm totally convinced of in, two, in that 28 years. One is fire sprinklers are without a doubt the most effective and efficient way of combating fires that we have available to us in this country. And number two is that fire sprinklers are probably the most underutilized method of fire protection used in this country. <laughs> um, sprinklers have been around for a long time and I'm not going to bore you uh, with a lot of the history and not going to stand here and keep you out in the cold and preach to you about sprinkler systems. Uh, we, we have time to do that later. Uh, the mayor asked me the other night when we were talking about this, he was pretty excited about us doing it, but asked me that inevitable question, what, what's your purpose? What are you trying to accomplish? And really all I'm trying to do and accomplish today is have a lot of people walk away here wild and asking themselves the question, why aren't sprinkler systems used more often and what can we do in this city to get sprinklers, to encourage sprinklers to be used more often. Sprinkler systems have been around for a long time for commercial dwellings, for industry. After several tragic fires throughout the years, they were they were put in school buildings, they were put in um, assembly buildings. The, the last area that they are not being utilized in is residential structures. And if you look at the fire statistics, all of our dollar loss, the most dollar loss total is in residential fires. Most of the fire fatalities total are in residential fires, ones and twos. You think of big dollar loss fires when the big factory burns down and it's millions of dollars, or you think of a, a nightclub, uh, Rhode Island nightclub here a few years ago that killed 100 people. Those are tragic events that occur that, that, that you see on the news all the time. But it's people dying in ones and twos in residential structure fires every day throughout this country that we have to, to combat. We talk about the quality of life in this city, um, and it's our job as the fire department to protect that quality of life. And again, we're convinced that this is probably the most effective, efficient way to do it, and there's going to have to be a lot of dialogue in the future um, on how we achieve that, whether it be through education and encouragement and tax breaks and what whatnot, or if it be comes through code enforcement. And everybody gets real excited and, and nervous when, when we say that, and I'm not saying that is the route we're taking. All I'm trying to do is spur some dialogue later on. So again, without wasting a lot of time, um, what we're going to try to do is take you through in some, some groups. We're going to get you kind of organized here. What's going to happen, we have the two houses, house number one, house number two. We're very simple here on the fire department. Uh, thanks to Premier Sprinkler Company, who has donated time and materials. They've installed a sprinkler system or a makeshift sprinkler system in house number two. Um, again, we'll, we'll get a few of you through there and let you look at that. House number one does not have a sprinkler system. These houses are, are size-wise, they're identical. Floor layout, they're identical. We have furnished them um, as close to identically as possible. Once we get a lot of you through there, um, we will light fires simultaneously. We have crews staged north and south. Um, what will happen is we have smoke alarms in each house. We'll have a person in there calling out uh, benchmarks when the smoke alarms activate. We'll keep track of this on the whiteboard over here so you can all see that when the sprinkler system activates. When the sprinkler system activates in house number two, uh, that'll be our trigger point that the fire department gets notified. We'll then wait four minutes to, to represent the response time of our department. That's our average response time. Um, and you'll see fire companies come in from the north and take care of that house. House number one, when we start to get smoke uh, visible from the outside where a neighbor or a passerby would see that, that'll be our indicator that the fire department's notified. Again, we'll wait four minutes to represent the response time and the crews will come in and deal with that situation. After the fires are extinguished, then we'll open up the houses and, and let the, you, you tour them and, and see the difference in the benefits of the systems. 